Ajax, for you, how much does having you know you and Brett coming back from last year's team, how much does that help with that trust on the defense? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's an extra 18 games that we got to build together, and, and it's one cohesive unit, and add Geppard in there, and then you know, it's a it's a whole new group, so it's an interesting dynamic. It's you got a lot of really old guys, and then you got some younger guys that are that are in new roles, not just freshmen, but also Nick Red picking up a short stick, uh, Donovan Lacey, you know, a transfer coming in. And it's just building that that trust as quickly as possible. And you know, I think early on we saw some overlap of it of having some new guys and some inexperienced guys. But you know, the biggest thing that we come in each week is you know we just got to have that growth mindset and being able to grow as one unit. Uh, you know, we realize we're going to make mistakes. We're not going to hold anybody scoreless. That's not our goal. It's it's a okay. We just got to be better the next week. And I think today was a step in the right direction in that second half. I think we do got we need to come out. Uh, firing more in the first half and you know kind of get our feet settled but like I said like coach said it was uh it was a big conference game and you know that's always a heightened sense of urgency and it's awesome because now a lot of those freshmen younger guys and new guys got that experience under the belt and, story and, on. and since he took over especially against Virginia in the overtime and then Notre Dame in the three overtime you really had some great saves how impressed have you been with his ability to bounce back especially in the second half yeah we, we love that about Brian and, and you know when you recruit guys you, um, you know, you kind of get to know them as people, um, you know, just have conversations and, you know, you talk to people who know them. Um, you know, he was coached uh, by Brian Reese, uh, Kathy's husband, um, his club team, and um, you just ask him questions, hey, what's he like, you know, and, he, you know, the, the things that we just kept hearing is that, like, he's very calm, cool, and collected, regardless of, you know, what's happening in front of him. So if he gives up four or five goals, like, he doesn't change. Um, and I think that's like one of the most underrated things about a goalie is, you know, and a faceoff guy is, you know, it's like a cornerback, like you get beat, like you got to walk out there like you're the man again. And, you know, that this this muscle sometimes takes over, right? And so he's been great um, and he's kind of an even keel kid by nature. Um, and when he, when he comes off on the sideline, we have conversations. We just talk about things. Um, he's a lot like Logan, um, you know, when he does come off, we just talk. I never get too heated with him. I'll say, hey, what do you think? What about this? We'll talk about the clears. Um, and sometimes I just, you know, try to loosen things up a little bit and relax them. Uh, but he's hard on himself, but he can let things go, which I think is sometimes hard for, for a competitive person. You've been in a lot of situations where you've come off big games and had to get ready for the next one. But you've got a new team here, and you said a lot of these guys are young. How do you get your team to move on from that win against Virginia and focus on the next game? It was hard. Um, it was. We did not have a great week of practice. Um, I had a call with the TV guys, and, and that was Thursday or Friday morning, and it was right before our last practice. And our practice yesterday was better. Um, but they're kids, right? They, you know, they win last week, and it's everywhere. And listen, give them credit. Like that's a really good team, um, you know. And it was a great atmosphere, but it just was kind of not going away. People kept talking about it. You can't protect them, right? It's everywhere. And you know, Brian Sage were everywhere and all that. And and we've been doing this long enough where it's like, guys, it's 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 Monday, it's time to move on. And and to be honest with you, the week we lost in Notre Dame was a little hard uh, the other way. Um, but 18, 22 year olds, I was them. I, listen, they put a lot into this either way. So uh, spring break, uh, we just, you know, we practiced at a different time. They didn't have school. I think they were sleeping more. We were just not um, as consistent this week. I, and there was no lack of care. It was just, they got out of their element. We're all creatures of habit. And we just, we weren't as like focused and we didn't execute as well. And then I think you got to take the temperature of the guys and you kind of have to remind them of, hey, hey, just understand what's what's coming down the road here. Like these are league games. Um, you talk to them about Raven Steelers, like the records don't matter. Those are slugfests. And, and today kind of took on that personality of that game in the third quarter. It went from really high scoring to just kind of a slugfest. Um, and you have to dig in and it's just different. So um, again, young group, uh, I think they really care. Um, and again, it's just kind of making sure you hit on those messages. And 
I'm not a big yeller and screamer. I, I've raised my voice a little bit more at times this week, but it's never personal. I love them. I'm just trying to get their attention. I'm like, listen, I care about you guys. I just, as an old guy, I need to remind you, like, yeah, they lost to Marquette last week, but they beat three really good Ivy League teams the three weeks prior. Hey, we lost to Loyola. Like, it, it's, it's who shows up that night and how you play for two hours, and anybody can beat anybody. Uh, and that's the world we live in. So if you don't come in focused and ready, like, it's probably not going to work out very well. You've talked about your old coaches. Who taught you how to do what you have to do with these guys? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I try to learn from a lot of people. Uh, that's a great thing about you know, social media now, podcasts, or picking up things. Uh, I had some great mentors, and I, I tried to, you know, listen to a lot of different people. Um, I think a big part of it is just communicating with your kids, you know, just having good dialogue. Hey, where are we at, guys? We meet with our leadership group every week. Where are we? How are we doing? Um, and, and make it so that we're doing this together. It's never, I'm like totally doing everything. It's a collective effort. We have a great coaching staff that does a great job. Then we have a, a great group of leaders and then we collectively try to win together. Uh, I just sit up here, but the guys make it all happen. I'm a small part of this whole thing, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, real quick. I think a mention has to be made of Kyle Long. I thought he was great today. Came up with a huge goal when we needed it. Yeah. And especially at the end, to settle, to hold the ball, nobody can catch him. I mean, he's really a free spirit. And, you know, to me, he proved his championship pedigree down the wire to protect that lead. Yeah, and kind of known as more of a passer, and he goes left-handed, scores that big goal to put us up three. And we've kind of been needing to score, you know, and, and Kyle got us two, three, uh, which I thought was really important. Uh, and I think for some of those guys, you know, the Pennsylvania guys, the Lukes, the Kyles, uh, the Spanoses, like the game, you know, for them is pretty important. Like every game's really important, but you know, those guys are, are, are Philly area guys. Like they grew up in that state. So I think there's a lot of pride that they have and they realize there are a lot of guys on the other side they know very well. And, you know, obviously we're all prideful. Um, but again, like Penn State, you look at what they did in the transfer portal, I think they did a really good job, you know, 45 and, and starting. So uh, four of their top six are, are fifth year guys. I mean, that is a veteran group. You, we all love to have of our top six guys, five fifth year or four fifth years. Um, and they played like a Jack Trainer's terrific. TJ Malone seems like he's been there forever. Really, really good players. Um, so we knew like they had a lot of potential, a lot of talent. and. We knew we would, you know, have to really play well tonight. Still in the front and one more. Hey, um, Coach, so losing Logan McNanny was obviously tough early on the season, but Brian Ruffle seems to be stepping up the net. What can you say about him stepping in for McNanny this season? Yeah, you know, and it's funny, like the plan was to redshirt him. You know, we really felt like we had a guy in Teddy that had played some really big moments and played well, and uh, his brother was a very good player here. So Brian was redshirting, you know, five weeks ago. And, and then life happens, you know, and all of a sudden stuff changes. So, um, you know, Brian, to be ready to, to play in, in these, some of these big environments, again, says a lot about him. Um, you know, he's, he's got to got that boyish face, but uh, inside him is this ultra competitive guy. Um, and he kind of wants to be in there in that big moment. And I was really happy with him. Like, I know he was disappointed because he's so prideful, um, but it's just his demeanor I think it's so important for a goalie, you know, after every goal you huddle up and your D guys need to have confidence in you. Um, and I think Brian has done a great job of, regardless of whether the ball goes in or not, in those huddles, he's calm, he's looking at his guys. And you can tell just like a quarterback, you know, like if, if you look scared, your guys are gonna know. And it's a bad thing for your defenders because your defenders all of a sudden might be like, well, we need to press out because we can't give up shots. And then your whole game plan goes out the window. So I think just the way he carries himself is huge. He prepares really well. Um, you know, we teased him a little bit because he was all over, uh, you know, social media last week. And, and and that's not him. Like he doesn't really look to seek attention. He's a pretty humble, uh, you know, uh, down to earth kid, but we were giving him some grief. Um, and uh, he handled it really well. Um, and again, it was just back to work. Uh, I know him, he'll be fired up for Monday. Um, you know, just feel like, you know, knowing his standard, he's gonna try to get right back on it and be working hard. But Logan McNaney's done a great job. Uh, he's finally back with us more. And I think he's really helped as well. Just a guy who's been there um, when he was, when he had a surgery a few weeks ago, he just wasn't around as, as much. And Logan's been a great mentor for him. Thank you.
Coach, if you can just translate it here for, for Ajax, just the added trust in that second half, how did that manifest? Was it switching more? Was it communicating um, through switches more? Or? Yeah, we. Um, that's a great thing about, you know, having the iPads and all that is, like, you can literally kind of show some guys, like, you know, after the fact sometimes, whether it's the, where you shoot on the field or even with the goalie, like, it happens but you don't get to see yourself per se. So you're able to just kind of say, hey, here's what we're doing, here's how we're doing it. Um, so you can actually, I think kids are such visual learners now because of the phones. Um, they learn a lot better seeing themselves. So we just, uh, we either didn't communicate well, we didn't have, um, like we, we either were extending too far or overextending, or we got caught up in the matchups. Uh, but again, they're really good. Um, you know, when you have seven back there, fully, like he's, he's seven's really good. Um, you know, 16's really good. Uh, 48's really good. He was the best offensive player for Binghamton last year. He's super fast. So if you have three really good Dodgers back there that are very dynamic and they give you problems and 22's had a great year, like he's a handful. Um, so now you start looking at the group, uh, 23 scored some goals. He was a very good player as well. So, you know, it causes some problems. You have to make some decisions in front of the goal. How do you want to play it? Cause they were just moving, moving, moving. And you stay man to man and they get leverage. Slides are going to be late. If you help too much to slide and they cut and their heads up, now they're going to carve you up. So you really have to be on the same page. And again, I thought just catching our breath at halftime um, and just kind of going back to talking about some different things that we do schematically, I think helped. Um, and I think Brian played better as well. So um, strange game at the faceoff. Actually you go from, you know, 20 faceoffs in the first half, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get really three in the third quarter. So the game really changed in so many ways. It went from a, a really fast game to a super kind of sloppy, slow game, a lot more turnovers. Six turnovers in a quarter is a recipe for disaster. Um, I mean, that's 24 turnover pace. So that third quarter, we got to go back and look at some things. We just weren't clean there. Uh, I loved our heart. I loved our toughness. Uh, we scrapped, but we just need to clean up some things. Um, but all in all, I, I know our guys have learned from it. Um, and again, just uh, psyched to be back here again next week. Uh, another really good team. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Coach.